Welcome back to the Full Style channel for another video. Today's video is going to be a DIY on how I created this cute, perfect for summer romper with the cutouts. I have been wanting to try a romper, make a romper for a long time, and I'm so excited that I finally got the ability to do so. So if you're interested to see how I created this romper, then stay tuned. So first I started out by sketching out my design and how I want it to look. I did some research on how different different rumpers for plus size and how they looked on other plus size bodies since I've never actually worn a rumper besides like in I think one try on. Um, so this is the fabric I'm using. I got this fabric from Joanne. It was uh, one of those specialty fabrics that was customly designed for Joanne. It was like $10 for two yards. I got it in, in reasonably on sale. It was like the last um, little bulk of fabric left. So I'm just going over my sketches and, you know, saying I'm going to add some bias tape to the front part. So, I'm sorry guys. I deleted the footage of me cutting out my fabric, which is... Probably for the best because I cut my shorts completely wrong. I, I cut them on the fold. And here I am trying to put a slit for the insert. For the thigh, um, the inseam. Um, to create the inseam for the shorts. I cut them on the fold. Um, and I cut a slit for the inseam. And here I am just pinning them together. And I'm going to take a straight stitch to that. I would not recommend doing this unless you're going to turn them uh, on their side and wear it and sew it that way. However, I did not do that. I tried to have front and back. And it just ended up looking terrible. It looked like a diaper. Or it looked like I had severe wedgie in both my butt and my vagina. So, I would not recommend cutting your shorts on the fold unless you're going to turn them to lay on their sides. So... Um, in the next clip, you're going to see me recutting my shorts into a pattern that I used last summer for the first shorts I made, which are my summer shorts DIY. So like I said, I took the pattern that I created last year from my uh, summer shorts, and I'm going to use that to recut the fabric. I was super scared because I did not want to waste this fabric. I had really paid attention to where I cut this fabric because I wanted, I knew, I knew where I wanted the floor to lay on my body. But like I said, I cut this fabric on the fold, and that was severely unflattering the way I sewed it up. So I had to recut this fabric to give myself four separate pieces instead of two big pieces. So long story short, cut your fabric four times. Cut your short pieces four times. Do not cut on the fold. I would not recommend it. Once you have cut your four pieces of your shorts, you're going to take right sides together for your front and back piece. I've cut a little um, slit in my front pieces to know that there are two front pieces. And I'm going to pin my front piece to my back piece um, at the side and then my front piece and my back piece along the crotch area. So you're going to pin, you're going to lay down your pieces right sides together, front to back, and pin them along the inseam. You're going to do a stay stitch down the inseam of your shorts, well up the inseam of your shorts. Once we have done that, we're going to unfold these pieces and lay them right side together, pinning, starting to pin where the crotch will be, and that is right in the middle of that U section. You're going to pin at the crotch and start sewing from that section upwards because you want to make sure that middle section, which will become your crotch section, it crotch section is as neat and straight as possible. You want to start there so everything is seamless and nothing is crooked and wonky because you we don't want anything to be looking crazy on you. Once you have done that, you're going to unfold again and now we are looking like a proper pair of shorts. Yeah, look at this. 
So we're going to put right right sides back together again and then we're going to pin and stitch down the side of the shorts closing and encasing our shorts to be actual shorts so that we can try them on. Once you have done that, I went ahead and made a waistband. You do not have to be a waistband, but because how I cut my shorts, I was a little short on shorts. So I wanted to add a little bit more extra length to my shorts, so I made um, a waistband. The waistband is about three and a half inches wide. So, did you guys know that Full Style has its own playlist? Um, you can follow, you can find Full Style playlist. Um, on Spotify, I will leave a link below. Now I'm going to show you guys how I draped the bodice at the top of the rumper. So I went to my dress form. We still don't have a name for her, guys. Um, I went to my dress form and I just took my top pieces. How I cut these pieces, I used a wrap style shirt that I already had. And I used that to trace um, and create the padding for this um, wrap top. Um, I've done this previously in my wrap dress. I will leave that link below so you guys can use it as a reference. And I just cut out two front pieces that will wrap around and then the back piece which will be the back of the top. And I'm just sitting here pinning down the side so I know how the sides are going to lay. And I'm just playing around how I want this to wrap around my body, um, which part of the fabric I want to show, where I want the florals to sit. Like I said, I was very... Uh, careful how I cut this fabric because I wanted certain floors to go. So, so I cut out strips of the scrap fabric because I wanted to add have like a wrap style um, rumper. So I'm just pinning in here and I was going to do a faux um, little tie, little bow. Um, as you can see later on, I decided against it. Here I am just pinning up the back of the top of the rumper just so I can see how everything will look together and know where I need to pin everything so I can take that to my sewing machine as well as attaching the sleeves as well. Once you have decided the placement and how you want everything to lay on your body um, you can take that to your sewing machine so I am going to sew up the sides of the shirt sewing the, the two front panels to the back panel of the shirt leaving out the armhole and then I'm going to sew up the shoulder area again leaving out the armhole and leaving room for the neckline. Now we're going to take the remaining scraps of our fabric. Um, I cut these into wide strips. And right now I am pin folding and pinning these over so that I could cut them in smaller strips so we can use this as bias tape. Usually bias tape is cut um, at, a, at an angle on diagonal so that it gets the most stretchiest part of the fabric. I did not have enough fabric to cut it on the diagonal so I'm just going to use the remaining scrap fabrics and cut them in um, clean measured clean measure strips and use that to create my bias tape. Okay guys, I showed you this method once before um, in my DIY wrap dress, um, how I created my bias tape. You're going to take a towel and you're going to use a, strip, a pin and you're going to insert the pin into the towel where you can have like a nice little um, fold over. Um, so the pin should be inserted into the towel like under, under and over. Um, you're going to take your um, scraps of fabric and fold those into itself like closing doors. And you're going to insert that underneath the pin and slide it through. And take an iron as you're sliding that through and press that out to create the folding doors of the bias tape. This is the most simplest, easiest way I have found to make bias tape um, besides going to the store and buying some. But usually that only comes in solid colors and is not usually in the pattern or design that you have for your specific fabric. So this is a good way to take use of those scrap pieces of fabric that you have and to create bias tape for that nice, clean, finished hem. 
Once that is done, I am going to cut the ends of the three strips of bias tape that I created and cut that at a diagonal so that I can put right sides together and take that to my sewing machine and do a quick X stitch over the ends so that they could become one long piece of bias tape so that I can use that in creating um, the hem and the finish hem of the neckline of for my rumper. So you want to take your um, your bias tape, open it up, and on the wrong side of your fabric, you want to line the edge of um, the edge of the fabric of your top to that first um, seam, the crease, the seam that you created, to the bias tape. You want to put right sides to wrong sides, and you want to do a straight stitch along the perimeter of the neckline or the perimeter of the sleeve or the perimeter of the skirt, whatever, whatever you are using your bias tape. So again, right sides to wrong side. Then you want to clip off the excess, fold that over, and right where the folds the folds over meets your actual fabric of your top or your neckline. You want to sew as close as you possibly can in between that folds. This is called sewing in the ditch where you sew in between two seams or in between a fold and a seam so that you can almost um, camouflage that stitch and the color of that thread so it cannot be seen from the outside. Once I've done that, I'm going to sew up the side. Once I have done that, I'm going to sew up the sides of my sleeves. I had two seams on my sleeves because, again, I only had two yards of fabric. And after cutting my shorts and my top, I was running low on um, fabric to cut from. So I couldn't cut my sleeves on a fold. So I'm just going to cut up the underseam and then the top shoulder seam of my sleeves. And then I'm going to attach those to my romper again. You want to turn your... Um, your sleeves right side out and you turn your romper inside out and match those right sides together and then sew along the perimeter of your sleeve and turn all that right side out together and then you should have a finished clean seam of your sleeves. Now I'm going to add elastic band to the waistband of our romper. We want, because this fabric is very stretchy and it's not structural, we want that elastic band to kind of, you know, squeeze everything in and kind of give it a gathering effect to our short. I'm going to attach the elastic, but every so often I'm going to slightly pull on the elastic to give to make it a slightly taut so that it's, it bunches up and gathers that material so that we can have a nice fitted waistband on our romper as well as it has a little gathering effect and give a little flare to our shorts. And we're going to do this around the entire perimeter of our shorts, closing it off in the middle with a simple X stitch. Once we have inserted our elastic band, we're going to now attach the top of the romper to the shorts of the romper. And we're going to again turn those inside out, putting right sides together. And we're going to stitch along right where the elastic band and uh, elastic band meets so that we can camouflage that elastic band on the inside of the shorts as well as you cannot see the stitching on the outside of the romper. Once we have done all that, we are now ready to close off the front of our romper. So, guys, this is where I went, ran into a little trouble. I didn't like how the wrap style laid once I finished everything and I tried the romper on. Um, so, I'm going to improvise and I'm going to make a cute little tie and cut out front of the romper. I'm just going to fold over the elastic band to give a nice clean finish to the front because I won't be covering that up with um, the front of the top. And I'm going to just create um, a nice clean hem on the front part that was supposed to wrap over. And I'm going to attach um, some longer pieces that I cut and 
hemmed into a nice little tip, nice little triangles to the front wrap part. So that could be a nice cute little tie. And I'm going to use the rest of my scrap fabric to make little ties so that I can have a nice little cute little bow tie towards the front of the romper to create the nice little cutout with bow tie. So after I improvise, this is the final look, guys. It is so cute. It is so fun. I'm so excited about this romper. This is my first romper. I probably wear this come August when I go to Atlanta for the Curvy Fashionista Style Expo. This is perfect for a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon when you're going to meet drinks for when you're going to meet friends for drinks, having a little lunch, or you can wear this out on a nice little day date. Um, this is really cute. You're showing a little skin. You can wear a really cute bralette underneath this romper, um, so you don't have so much of so much of your cleavage showing. I don't have a bralette, so I didn't get to I didn't have nothing to wear underneath mine. But I have no problem showing off that much chest. But this is cute. I love the floors. I love the plaid. This is real cute. This is going to be real cute going into the early fall. You could put a jean jacket over it and maybe some little booties. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so very much. Please give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and make sure to follow Four Style Inc. on both Twitter and Instagram, all at Four Style Inc. And show your love and support if you'd like to see more DIYs in the future by becoming a patron and supporting Full Style Inc. on Patreon. Thank you so very much for watching. I love you guys, but most importantly, always remember to love yourself fully. Until next time.